So today I have something really special for you guys. I was contacted by Venus Optics, which makes the Laowa line of lenses. And if you don't know Laowa, then you've probably been living under a rock for the last year or so because they've been taking the photography and videography world by storm with some of their incredibly unique lenses. Um, one of the lenses you might be familiar with is the 24 millimeter probe lens, which is uh, very unique to say the least. But not only do they have that lens, but they actually have a huge range of lenses that are almost one of a kind lenses. And I am actually gonna be showing you guys one of their brand new one of a kind lenses that they sent me to review. And here it is. This is the incredibly unique lens. And as you can clearly see, this is not your standard lens. This is a four millimeter circular fisheye lens. So four millimeters on a crop sensor camera, that means from this side to that side is 210 degrees field of view. So just a little perspective, this light right here, that's actually behind the camera, which makes it insane for quite a few reasons. If you point this camera straight up at the sky, uh, you can still see the ground on both sides of the camera. So pretty cool for nighttime shots. And as you can see, it's also excellent for showing off my messy office here. Um, but yeah, a little bit about this lens, obviously four millimeters fisheye from Laowa, F 2.8. It has quite a few cool features about this lens I'm gonna go over in this video. But uh, this is what the lens looks like from your perspective. And as you can see, obviously, not only does it make interesting looking images, but the lens also looks pretty interesting itself. Um, a few things about this lens, obviously it's a four millimeter circular fisheye, and this one in particular is meant for the Sony E-mount cameras. And the interesting thing about this lens in particular is that not only is it a circular fisheye, but it actually makes a fully circular image on a crop sensor camera, which is very, very unique. So this lens also has a maximum aperture of f 2.8, which makes it really good for low light situations. You know, you could imagine because it's a four millimeter lens, you can get some really, really slow shutter speeds just handheld with this. And uh, coupled with the f 2.8, you can take some pretty awesome low light photos, not to mention for astrophotography, you can capture the entire sky in just a single shot, which makes this pretty cool, um, pretty cool tool for astrophotographers. It also has an insane minimum focusing distance of 3.1 inches or eight centimeters. And uh, I actually had to look this up because I always assumed that minimum focusing distance was from uh, measured from the front element of the lens, but it actually turns out that it's actually measured from the sensor. So 3.1 inches from the sensor, which is actually marked with that little spot right here, 3.1 inches is only about right here. So you can shove this lens like into a flower or um, between some leaves and you can get some crazy, crazy shots um, that you wouldn't have imagined you could get with a fisheye lens before. So one of the things that Laowa lenses are known for is their build quality. And this one is no exception. It's fully metal from the back of the lens all the way up to the front, fully metal, aperture ring, focus, everything is fully metal. Now, one of the interesting things that you'll notice about the build of this lens is obviously it's got a massive bulging front element. And that poses a couple of interesting um, issues about the lens. One is you can't have a standard lens cap. So this is what the lens cap looks like. It's more of just a thing which slides right onto the front of it, just like that. And it's held together um, by friction from a sort of velvet-ish type material on the inside. So it's just held on by strictly friction. And one thing I would mention about this lens cap is to be extra careful. Don't pick your camera up by the lens because it will fall off if you aren't careful. 
Another interesting part about having a lens which bulges so much like this one is that you can't actually put any filters on the front of it. There's not even threads to screw filters onto, and uh, there's also no filter holder on the rear of the lens. So no filters, and uh, as you'd also imagine, there's no lens hood. Because this lens has a 210 degree field of view, um, everything that would come on the side of the lens would just be an obstruction in the image, which uh, I'll talk about in a little bit about lens obstructions because uh, there's quite a few. So like I mentioned, when I was talking about the full metal build of this lens, uh, I did mention that it has a fully metal aperture ring, and that wasn't uh, a mistake in speaking. This really does have an aperture ring on the front of it. This has little apertures, aperture selections from 2.8 all the way to f16, which is done by clicking it into each aperture selection. And uh, also, you because you focus manually and because there's really not a lot of space on this lens, it is done through this little notch right here on the bottom of the lens. And uh, it also has markings for each one of those right there on the top. Everything from infinity all the way down to its minimum focusing distance of 0.1. So obviously one of the most important parts of a lens review is the performance of the lens. And I'm actually happy to report that the lens performs very, very well for a fisheye lens. And actually, if you check the link in the description, I'm actually gonna have a bunch of photos that you can download, all full resolution. I haven't changed the sharpness on any of the images, so you can take, take those images, let yourself know how well this lens performs to your satisfaction, and um, overall, I thought it performed very well, especially the center of the images were insanely, insanely sharp. Even at f2.8, the center of the image was super, super sharp. One of the sharpest lenses that I actually personally have for this camera. So the chromatic aberration on this lens can be a little bit of an issue, but it's mainly towards the far, far edges of, of the image, um, especially right at the edge of the image where honestly you might not even use that part of the image. You actually get some pretty severe fringing, but it's nothing that isn't really uh, acceptable for a fisheye lens. And actually, in comparison to other fisheye lenses, it actually does a very, very good job of keeping those uh, chromatic aberrations under control. And uh, I think it goes without saying that the uh, distortion on this lens is outrageous, but that's really what you're kind of uh, expecting. And honestly, it's kind of what you're trying to get with a fisheye lens. Um, the distortion, obviously, huge, huge fisheye distortion. I don't even think I had to say that. So what's my take on this lens? I'm gonna start with the bad, and it's just because I wanna end on a high note and end with the good parts. Because honestly, the worst part about this lens is actually it's defining feature of having that 210 degree field of view. And uh, it's not really the fault of the lens, it's just the nature of dealing with that. Now, when you have a 210 degree field of view, you're getting a lot in the shot. And when you're getting a lot in the shot, there's also a lot in the shot that you don't want to get. So like when you're taking photos with this lens, you're getting your feet in the shot, you're getting your own head in the shot, and not to mention, you're always gonna be getting your fingers in the shot. Um, now, the A6000 series cameras, they're all known for their really shallow grips. And uh, despite having a really shallow grip, if you look really, really closely on the images, even just with a standard grip, you get just a tiny sliver of the grip in the shot. Now, while that's not a deal breaker, you can always do a little circular crop and crop that part out, which I would actually suggest doing no matter what. Um, you can't hold the camera like this. When you hold the camera like this, you're just getting your fingers in the shot big time. So you kind of have to hold the camera really carefully like this and you know hit the shutter like that and you also have to hold it really, really far away from your body or else you're gonna be getting your feet in the shot. If you're wearing a hat, which I wear all the time outside, you're getting your hat in the shot the whole time. So again, it's not really the fault of the lens. That's what you're asking for when you try to get a huge field of view like that. 
And also another thing that you wouldn't really think about when having a huge field of view like that is you're also gonna be getting your shadow in the shot 50% of the time, if not more. Um, you know, you imagine if you're pointing even 90 degrees away from the sun, your shadow's still gonna be in the shot. So you almost always have to point towards the sun to be able to ensure that your shadow's not getting in the image. And, you know, of course, if you're just going around taking photos for fun, which this lens is a lot of fun to take photos with, um, you're really having to keep that in mind. And so if you're trying to use this in any sort of professional way, that is something that is a huge problem because you're really having to then frame up your shots either only indoors or only in the shade or pointing directly towards the sun. And again, it's not the fault of the lens, that's just the nature of the beast. Now my final issue with this lens is that the use cases are really difficult to figure out. Now with a lens like this, you're not gonna be taking standard portraits, you aren't gonna be going out and taking standard architecture photos. So the thing is, is what do you use the lens for? Now of course there's gonna be a ton of people using this lens for you know VR or 3D purposes so they can make 360 degree images really, really easily. But in the world of photography, it's not your standard lens, which brings me to why this lens is so good, and that's that it is not your standard lens. While you might not be using this lens in the standard professional way, you'll be taking photos that you've never taken before, and you'll start looking at your photography in a new way. You know, take the, the camera, put it way down low, stick it straight up, stick it inside a plant. There's really no end to a new way you can use this lens, and I'm still trying to figure out new ways to use this lens. Um, and that's really why Venus Optics makes lenses like this. It's because they're unique. I mean, the world doesn't need a thousand new 50 millimeter 1.8 lenses. There's already a thousand more that already exist, but how many four millimeter 2.8 lenses out there exist? Maybe one, I think this might be the only one. These Laowa lenses help you do what may have been previously impossible to do before. And while this lens isn't reinventing the circular fisheye, what it is doing is it's bringing you a no compromise lens. It's a full metal body, super sharp lens, 2.8, and it's bringing it to you for a relatively good price. You know, in the world of photography and videography, we're used to prices ballooning up to $1,000, $2,000 easily. And for less than $200, because this goes for $199 US dollars, you're getting everything that you need to get in a fisheye lens. And not to mention, a really good fisheye lens. This is a lens that I'm actually gonna buy after I send it back to Lawa. And I'm not buying it because it's super sharp or it's 2.8 or it's really good in low light. The reason I want it is because it's fun. Now, that's the whole point of going out and taking photos is because it's fun. And you know, of course, you, know, you wanna take your 70 to 200 2.8, bring it out to the park, take some awesome portrait photos, and there's nothing wrong with that. I love doing that too. But sometimes I forget to have fun. And what this lens allows me to do is just pop the lens cap on, stick it in my pocket, and go out, and every once in a while, take the camera out, pop some photos off, laugh about them, because it's just a fun lens. And you have that added benefit of it being sharp, it being a 2.8, and being great in low light. Um, but at the end of the day, you want to have the lens that's good and fun, and that has both of them together. So I hope you guys like this review. Like I said, I would rate this lens a 5 out of 5 for a fisheye, because fisheyes, they're not everybody's cup of tea, and they're not the lens that everybody's looking for. But if you're in the market for a fisheye lens, I would highly recommend checking this out. If you don't want to buy it right out of the gate, Go check out somebody who has one. Go check it out in a store, your local uh, Venus Optics or Lawa dealer, and uh, check it out because I'll tell you what, like I said, I'm buying it. There's no doubt in my mind, I want it. I've had so much fun with it. But um, if you guys have any questions about this lens, let me know down below. I'll answer all the questions I can. 
And again, check that link down in the description where I'll have full resolution images for you guys to download and see what you guys personally think about the lens and see if it's something that you'd like to potentially have in your arsenal of lenses. So thank you guys for watching the entire video and I will see you on the next one. Oh, yeah.